Welcome to another edition of My Car Shop. Today, we're going to actually be cutting a little bit of metal on the 70 Challenger. Hope you enjoy this episode. Working out of a 100-year-old refurbished barn, bringing 35 years of experience to projects considered beyond repair. Vision, creativity, and problem solving are essential tools in this place. Watch as we transform junk into polished metal miracles. This is My Cars Shop. All right, so uh, we're here with the 70 Challenger, and uh, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to accomplish today, but I've been released a little bit to be able to start... Um, Moving forward, I'm being a little bit more physically active here. So I thought today would be a good opportunity for me to just spend a little time uh, with my cutter and cut out some of the sheet metal in the trunk here and start to get a real good picture of where we are at with the floor pans in the trunk of this 70 Challenger. Um, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to accomplish, but I, I'm just excited to get at this. I've been waiting for weeks to be able to do this. And uh, so today, that's what we're going to be doing. So let's take a little look at what's going to be happening. As you know, fabricating is my love. And uh, I've just been so anxious to get the cutter out and start cutting away all of this crap metal in here. Uh, the left side of this trunk floor is definitely the worst. But uh, the right side is not much better. And I don't really intend to be reusing much of this metal. I plan to rebuild everything. I'm not buying panels, I'm going to make them. Um, I've got a, actually a pretty cool design in mind for the floor pan for the, re for the reinforcement bracing. Uh, these rollers and stuff, I can duplicate all of this with my bead roller. But I um, you know, just had a little idea of something I might like to put in the floor of this, so we'll see. Uh, so I'm going to take the cutter out and we're going to cut some of this up and make some room in here and begin to take a look at what it's going to take to rebuild frame rails because I'll be making this frame rail, uh, probably from the hoop back here to the leaf spring part uh, by hand. Also over on this side once I get to that, although this side isn't as bad. Um, I could buy all of this stuff, but again, the fun for me just isn't being a parts replacer. The fun for me is fabricating. I love making stuff from scratch. So I'll get a couple of big sheets of metal and we'll start bending up frame rails and making floor pans and all of that stuff here. Hopefully before the end of the year is my plan. Uh, again, it's going to depend on my health, but uh, we're moving forward, so let's do it. Okay, so uh, getting ready to go after this, and I uh, just want to comment on a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I went to fire up my furnace today, and I'm out of propane, so that slurps. But uh, safety, 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 I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, safety glasses, ear protection, gloves, it's all important stuff, so uh, always make sure that you've got that. Um, it, it's, I can't emphasize that enough how important that is. So take my glasses off here, get them in my pocket, hopefully they don't hit the floor, and uh, get after this thing. Let's make some sparks, boys. Woohoo! Okay, so I know some of you are going to ask me why I'm switching to the pneumatic here uh, because I thought I had more cutoff wheels for my DeWalt and I don't. So uh, we're going to go to the other cutoff wheel here for now. Uh, a lot of times in the past I would use my plasma cutter for this, uh, but it's broken and this metal is pretty thin so it's going pretty quick. Uh, I prefer to use the electric, but I think this is going to do okay uh, because it's just, um, it's going to be, uh, yeah. The metal's thin enough, it's not going to take a lot of horsepower for this, so definitely want my gloves on, 
and uh, it's going to get really cold here. Okay, so uh, as I can tell, I just need to dig around and see if I have any more of those cutting discs for the electric. The pneumatic just isn't working. Um, the, the, it's going to be faster to drive to town and buy more discs than it's going to be to just wait and uh, try to use the pneumatic one. It just doesn't have enough horsepower. So uh, I'm going to dig around a little more, see if I have another couple of those discs. I couldn't find any. If I don't, I'm going to go ahead and run to town because I could have this whole trunk floor out of here uh, much faster than if I sat here and did that with the pneumatic. I could be to town and back and still have an hour coffee break uh, and still be working on that with the pneumatic when it's going so slow. So I'll be back. Okay, so here's what we've got so far. I've uh, cut out the rusty floor pan there, got the frame rail opened up so I can get all the dirt cleaned out from inside and see what I've got. Uh, I'll still have to peel this off. Eventually, I'll either do that with the air chisel or just a grinder. Um, I've got it trimmed off up there now where I'm going to be joining it in to the hump when I do put the new floor in. And I was just starting to open this brace up to see what we have here. Uh, probably going to just make a new brace there, but I want to peel the metal off of that. And so I was going along here cutting and this metal is a bit thicker and I just need to get another couple cutting discs as I mentioned. So I'm going to take a trip to town right now. I've looked around the shop. I can't find any more. So uh, that pneumatic cutter there is ancient and just doesn't have any power anymore. And uh, this the electric is a much better way to go. So we'll be back at it in a while. Okay, so uh, we're back and I've got the uh, new disc on the wheel already, or the new wheel on the thing. And I picked up a set of goggles so I can wear my regular glasses so I can see what the heck I'm doing. And hopefully these are going to work all right, and so far I'm not impressed with them. Because the uh, strap just ripped right out of it already, so this sucks. That was not what I wanted to start out by having to do, was fix that. Dumb thing. There we go. I don't think that's going to work. All right. Ah! Okay, so ear protection, goggles, gloves, mask. Here we go. right there I think. Yes we do.
Okay, so uh, got most of this opened up over here. Um, even though the frame rail on that side is rusted and bent, on this side it's actually in a lot worse shape. Um, I'll, I'll get you in there in a minute and let you see it. But I got most of the floor cut out that I wanted to so I got a better picture of what needs to be done. So I'm going to clean up some things here a little bit and then uh, get you in here and let you take a look at what we've got done so far. It, it's um, also amazing to me how um, just getting this rusty metal out of here um, all of a sudden makes the car look so much better. Even though it's big holes, um, I, I think it's because it doesn't look as destroyed and you can really see how easy it's going to be. Uh, that's relative, obviously, if you know how to do this, but how easy it is to be able to just put new pieces in and replace the stuff that's bad. And um, it just, you know, once you've got this cleaned up and the new pieces of frame rail in the floor pan goes in quick. Now, I'm not going to be putting the floor pan in uh, you know, right away because um, I've got to do the frame rails, as I said, and there's framework underneath that I'm going to need to be doing also. But the nice thing about doing it this way that I've discovered, and I've done a lot of this, is I don't really have to do a lot of reinforcing uh, on this body at this point to be able to just take out a frame rail. So we'll get some jack stands under it and you know get everything measured up and make sure everything is true. Uh, but I don't need to be doing all kinds of crazy hex bracing and everything. Uh, if I was gonna replace the whole frame rail, I definitely would. Um, but things are still really solid here. And uh, you know the sprung weight is where it belongs. Um, you'd be amazed at how, how strong this thing still really is even though so much of the metal is gone. Um, so anyway, there will obviously be some bracing that I'm going to do, but uh, like I said, I've done a lot of this. I've never had one twist on me, um, so I'm not worried about it at all, and I'm not worried about needing to run all kinds of crazy bracing to hold the car straight. Uh, we'll get jack stands under it in the right spot, then it'll be in place, and uh, it'll be fine. So I actually pro-streeted that car that way uh, 25 years ago, and it worked good. So perfectly square, had it checked on a frame machine, it's fine. Uh, we did the charger about the same way, and that had bent frame rails. Um, and I'm not saying it's not necessary sometimes to do all of that bracing, um, but you kind of get a feel from experience on uh, what's overkill and what's necessary. So some guys might agree. I'm sure I'm going to hear some griping in the comments of the way I'm doing this, but I've been doing this for almost 40 years now, and uh, I just believe in doing as much as is necessary to make it right without spending gobs of time and money that just aren't necessary. Okay, so uh, here's what we've got now. I've got the frame rail cleaned out. I'm gonna be replacing a huge chunk of that. Uh, might even be replacing more. Um, talk about something else there. One of these braces I think is usable. The other one I'm probably gonna replace. I think the one on the left, I'm gonna go ahead and make another one. Uh, so far the one on the right looks to be pretty solid. This is what surprised me. And I had, I had noticed this before underneath the car, but now that I have it opened up from above, I thought that the left frame rail was the worst. Uh, but that frame rail there is completely wasted. And some of that is from where that bracket bolt's on there. Um, I'm a little puzzled by that. Usually a car uh, will rust out on the driver's side more than the passenger side. And uh, this one uh, seems to be the passenger side. So I don't know if they drove it on the highway backwards all the time or what. Um, but that's what we got here. I'll eventually cut the rest of that trunk extension out, uh, but for now I'm leaving it, but you can see I do have holes all the way through the frame. I'm underneath the frame there coming up inside, uh, but that's no big deal. Uh, I'm gonna replace all that anyway. I'm gonna make a couple of pieces of frame rail that are probably, uh, well, they'll go right up to the hoop up there, so 36 inches long. Uh, something else that I learned from a guy, uh, a channel that I watch, uh, it's called Glasgow's GLL or G L A S G O W Z. Um, I'll see if I can put a link to his stuff up here. Um, he took and, and sliced all of this open over the frame all the way down so that you could clean inside of there. And I've never had a car that I really felt I needed to do that before. But after watching what he did, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. At a minimum, I may just go ahead and cut the whole chunk out of the floor in the middle and then just weld it back in when I'm done. I'm not looking for concourse. It's gonna be a you know, pretty good dollar car, but it's not gonna be a $100,000 car when it's done. So um, again, I enjoy the fabricating and what's 
Visible, I want to look very good. What's hidden, I want to be right, but I'm not worried about perfection uh, and stuff like this. I just want it to be a car that I can go out and enjoy driving and beat the crap out of. So uh, that's what we've got here, and I think I'm going to call it quits for today. Uh, probably pushed beyond what my doctor wanted me to be doing, but I was having fun, and uh, you know, today is a day for having fun. Um, this day only comes once a year, so I'm enjoying it. Well, that was fun. I really enjoyed doing that. Um, it looks so much better having all that rust out of there. The car already looks a lot more manageable and a lot more fixable. Um, yeah, there's a lot to do yet, but uh, I'm, I'm excited about it. So a uh, few more things that I want to do next. I want to take the bumper off, get that rear splash pan off of there, uh, get a good look at how that rear brace is across the back. Um, that's important because that's one of the main mounting points that I'm going to be using uh, when I get this car sitting in here and get it squared up so that I can get the frame rails cut out and put back in. I'll be doing those one at a time. I think it would be wise to do the uh, passenger side first, which wasn't my original plan. I was going to do the driver's side, uh, but that passenger side fr frame rail is already so shot. Cutting that out of there and replacing it is structurally, I don't think it's doing much already anyway. So uh, we'll, we'll get that done uh, soon. There's a, it's good enough up front there. I can get jack stand underneath the, um, the front of the frame rail and uh, then back here in the back and get that uh, good and solid there, a couple more mounting points and be able to just chop that out of there and get the metal on the sheet metal brake and build, bend up a new frame rail and get it in there. So uh, yeah, I'm excited about that. So take that back end off of there and see what we've got. Uh, and we'll go from there. So maybe that'll be the next episode. Um, we'll see. I don't know. Um, but I feel good. Um, I don't feel any pain right now, and I'm happy with that. Um, like I said, I probably overdid it, but oh well. So let's call it a day. I really do appreciate you tuning in and watching. Um, we are on Facebook. We're on Instagram. Uh, forward slash my car shop is us. You see how it's spelled by this channel, so I don't need to uh, do that out for you. Um, I'm having a lot of fun posting a lot of different memes on there, fun little things, um, and uh, it's, it's fun to, to interact with you guys over there as well. So I appreciate it. Um, I appreciate you uh, accepting the talk videos that I've done up to this point, uh, understanding that I can't, I couldn't be out here uh, working for the last six weeks, and I don't like that. I want to be doing something every, every week and put something out at least. Um, you'll be bouncing around between the projects, but that's been the reality of life for me. So, all right, I think that'll do it. Uh, so we'll see you next time. And as always, don't forget, buy your hats. Also, rock.